So we continue with the consideration of forces that are acting on a control volume. Uh, we did uh, discuss and looked into the gravitational forces, uh, but uh, clubbed with it are the other forces, uh, an important one of them are surface forces. So surface forces are not as simple to analyze because they contain normal as well as tangential components. So, a lot of things are taking into effect because of viscosity, the shear, and all these things that are playing their role when a viscous, when a real fluid is moving or is being considered. And uh, therefore, the consideration of surface forces is a bit complex as compared to the simple forces uh, such as the gravitational force, which is acting only in one direction. The normal stresses normally are only the pressure forces. So pressure is acting on the normal to the control surface, control volume, and therefore that part is the component of pressure applied on the surface that we are considering. But at the same time, remember that when viscosity exists and it is non-zero, then the shear stresses are also, they come into act and they are also exhibiting, they are showing their presence. And therefore, we need to uh, consider them as well. The gravitational force acting on a differential volume element is equal to the weight and the axes have been rotated so that the gravitational vector acts downwards in the negative z direction. Well, we have shown here, this is a small differential volume that we already saw in a control volume, but here it's an enlarged image that we see. And since the gravity acts only in the downward direction, as I have mentioned several times, therefore you see only this component that is non-zero and we have to consider it. And of course, the rectangular coordinates, again which I just mentioned a little while, they are mutually perpendicular and are known as Euler's coordinates uh, system and x, y and z. So x and y are in the horizontal plane, y the z is in the uh, vertical plane. And surface force acting on a differential force can be shown to be as D of F is equal to sigma ij dot n, n is a unit vector, times dA. So sigma ij is the crucial thing here that needs to be noted. And they are derived from the viscous forces and also that generate shear forces and, and therefore they play a very important role in equations of fluid flow motion. Uh, here if we see a small controlled surface and then you can see normal to the surface we have surface forces as well the tangential forces are the one that create this viscosity components represented by sigma ij. So they will be, they can also be written as, if we see two-dimensional force, then sigma xx, sigma xy, sigma yx, and sigma yy, and so on. So similarly, a lot of components are there that needs to be taken into account when we are considering the totality of the forces that act on a real fluid flow on a chosen control volume. The total forces, therefore, is summation of forces equals, and this is the net resultant force. They are comprised of body forces and surface forces. 
and in this we have the gravitational forces occurring here already uh, mentioned and for controlled surface we have sigma ij dot n times dA this integral will take care of all the forces that are acting on the surface this is the force that are acting on the whole body and if we further expand it then we will see that the surface forces comprise three main components the one that are normal to it are known as pressure forces then there are viscous forces uh, that occur due to viscosity and gives rise to shear forces and uh, etc so the combination of pressure and shear forces will determine the totality of the uh, forces that are acting on the uh, surface and in addition to that we have written a summation of f other forces if any other force also uh, exist we have to take into account so the net total force is sum of all these forces on a real fluid flow